It is everywhere. Does not matter how old or young you are, think back to it or think of it. The setting is usually always a school. You have seen it, either on the board or on a notebook. Even beyond the walls of academia, it has been here longer than anyone can remember. It is this. It is an S. Everyone has a different name for it. S, Super S, Fancy S, Stussy S, Superman S, Chainlink, Infinity, etc. It has no universal name. You have probably drawn it, children still draw it, and they will draw it long after all this. Why though? Where does it come from? Why do children love drawing it? It is simple to draw, six parallel lines, then fourteen in total. Significant numbers, a sign most learn of between childhood and adolescence, supposedly around fourteen years old generally. A puzzle or optical illusion, in some form or another. There are two varieties of it the interlinked one, and the segmented S, though they are rarely distinguished. It is just the S, the universal S. The problem, for something so universal, nobody can find its origin. All theories circle back to the same thing. A random thing kids draw, something kids have been drawing since the 50s, all across the world. The mystery is how global the symbol is, but how little is known about it. The only disclaimer I give is that I cannot say anything definite. Every kid knows it, but each one has a different name for it. Across schoolrooms and languages. The only thing this video can do is investigate each theory and support or debunk the most common ones. The Universal S is far older than the internet, and it will definitely outlast it. It is impossible to chronicle the history of a silent empire. Then what is this sigil? To childhood and internet culture, it seems heavier than the cross, this S. A symbol that defies definition and avoids investigation. Yet, in one glimpse, everyone seems to know it. To start, Occam's razor is best first applied to this S's, uh, sharp edges. As the adage goes, simpler solutions are more likely to be correct than complex ones. One can say the Super S slash Stussy S is simply a doodle or graffiti, but there is a better explanation. Bubble letters. With how omnipresent the S is, it likely has a similar origin. Ask yourself, who invented bubble letters? Not a font, but a style. Drawing letters with space inside them like balloons. Someone had to, right? It was probably some school child from long ago. Nobody knows who, it was just some anonymous student. Never to know their impact. The S probably has a similar origin. It was a random design some kid conjured up one day, then others copied it. The issue with the S is that it is hard to stylize other letters in a similar fashion. Though some have seen the S used in a certain smile phrase, one that depicts the word as a beach. A variety of the S that exists in the southern United States, and, bizarrely enough, Greece. Why the S might be appealing is because it is a logic or visual puzzle. In the interlinked variety of the S, if it is truly an S, the symbol loops into itself, like an infinity symbol. This makes it fun to draw, a handy design children have used. It just looks cool. Why does it look cool? A Mobius strip. It is a Mobius strip, or similar to one, but projected on a 2D surface. A shape with only one surface that loops into itself. An object every child learns to draw or make. The Super S is just another variety. That might also explain why it is so common in schools. The S is easy to draw on lined paper and standardized tests. As the shape is so simple and uniform, it can be drawn easily along straight axes. And when you're bored, just doodle one down. Another theory points towards a similar educational origin. It also explains why the symbol is so common across the Anglosphere. Scholastic. Though never proven, there have been claims the S originates as a puzzle slash brain teaser in a scholastic publication. The theory is the test presented three and three parallel lines, then asked the reader to draw an S, or make an S using eight other lines. And the scholastic corporation could have spread it overseas, or a similar test. The issue? Nobody has found any proof. This will come up a lot. If someone could find the issue, it would prove the origin. The problem? Uh, nobody has. Not that it would be easy. Until someone does, it remains unknown. What is so fascinating is how universal it seems. This is also the major problem explaining it. 
The Super S symbol is global. It is an international sign with no agreed upon name. In many nations, in most schools, it is drawn. Comments have mentioned the S existing in the United States, Egypt, Vietnam, Malaysia, France, Taiwan, Greece, Sweden, Yemen, Australia, New Zealand, the Philippines, the Netherlands, Palestine slash Israel, Germany, Brazil, Trinidad and Tobago, Guam, Canada, Mexico, the UK, South Africa, Panama, and Norway. And a variety exists in Bulgaria and other Cyrillic alphabet countries. It exists on all continents. Well, except probably Antarctica, but I would not be surprised. Is there a unifying trait? No, not really. They all use the Latin alphabet, except Greece, but that is given. They all have a past in European imperialism, but since they use the Latin alphabet, that too is a given. My standing theory is that the symbol originates probably in England, but we will come to that. Another long-standing theory is that the stylized S comes from a band or brand, a topic Vice has covered in a good article, which I will recommend as it gives good details on multiple theories, a couple of which will be explained here. The Superman Theory. Who else has such a cultural monopoly on the letter S than Superman, DC's Golden Boy? Some call the S the Superman S, saying it is based off the Superman symbol. The issue? The resemblance is only passing, which will also be a common theme. The Suzuki Theory. This one is simple. The S is based off the Suzuki symbol, a stylized variety of the logo from Japan, which... Suzuki also denies, insisting the Super S has no relation to their cars or vehicles. Not at all. And this is probably true. The resemblance, once again, is passing. This brings attention to the most popular theory field. The S originates from a band's stylized logo, which would make sense, this is what I believed before I delved deeper into the topic, that the S was just some rock band logo. The issue? The theory does not really pan out. The Styx Theory. A common claim is that the S comes from the band Styx's logo. The problem is that the Styx logo is also not the same thing. Once again, it looks similar, but it is not it. Similar, but not exact. The S does not loop. The curves are too wide with too much space. The Sacred Reich Theory. You have probably never heard of the Arizona metal band Sacred Reich, but they are a candidate for the S's origin. This is the other major explanation. That looks about right. The problem? The band denies they are its origin. They say they simply adopted it, meaning the S predates even their use of it. So they cannot claim to be its creators. They may have possibly popularized it, but did not create it. Nor did Slipknot. They just appropriated it. So the S seems to have become dominant through cultural osmosis, something so commonplace people do not notice it. While its origins are obscure, there could be an explanation for its dominance. Graffiti. This would be a sensible origin. The S was either created or popularized by a random graffiti artist or group. Where or why? No idea. It does make sense, though. The symbol is rather catching and a good tag, though no one has ever had proof to claim it. So other artists and kids began to use it as an open source symbol. That could explain why the symbol is so commonplace, it just entered the litany of common graffiti marks. Others and subcultures picked it up from there. The issue is that this is far from a clear origin, and there is a far more commonplace one often offered. The Stussy Theory. The one most bandied about to explain the S's origin. This one is the most common explanation, but the easiest to disprove. The S predates the streetwear company's founding in the 80s, and the Stussy logo does not resemble the S, nor does any of their merchandise. Stussy's own leadership has denied the claim too. It is not theirs. The S does appear in the Stussy promo, Sean Stussy x Justapose, but the video is from 2009, nor has anyone produced any photos supporting an earlier origin, despite there being plenty of claims. The Stussy explanation does connect with the graffiti theory, though. This points towards a common origin in California, but it is still vague. A possibility is that the S was used on knockoff Stussy gear. It could have circulated in the bargain bins. The same issue that crops up is that no one can prove it. People claim they saw it on shirts, but they do not prove an origin or an image, simply that it was used on knockoff products. The S has also been used by other groups, 
as any widespread symbol is, which has caused a good deal of misunderstanding. It, as a symbol, has no connotation, but as such a popular image, plenty have used it. Some think it is a gang or a college symbol, but if it is, it was simply picked up. The symbol has been proven to exist as far back as the 80s, and claims going back to the 50s. Gangs in California have definitely used it, but a history is impossible to give. People have been using it and similar symbols for a long time. The Endless Knot motif is rather old, so it has no start, and it will likely have no end. So, once again, what is it? Symbols like it stretch back nearly 4,000 years. Similar Mobius or Infinity symbols have their own spiritual and philosophical meanings. Endless knots and mandalas have existed in India for eons. Similar varieties also exist in Europe as the Celtic knot and the conundrum of the Gordian knot. Also, the Ouroboros has a similar theme of self-consuming infinity. It is all over the world, a theme of humanity. These symbols are not new, though the S seems to be the most recent one, unique for being the first modern variety of them. Instead of religious significance, it gets put on bathroom walls and notebooks. A lot of notebooks. Yeah, every kid drew it in their notebook. Kids have been doodling it in their notebooks for a long time. And one random comment, on Know Your Meme of all places, shed an interesting light on this. One that dates back to the 1800s and aligns with my personal theory, Clifton Johnson's Old Time Schools and School Books from 1904 has an interesting chapter on the topic. Doodles from old American school books, and these scribbles may look familiar. Similar infinity symbols and endless loops drawn in the margins of books by school children. And one style was the Spanish S, page 163. Looks familiar, doesn't it? The S may have a common heritage with all these symbols. I think the Spanish S may be the iconographic grandfather of the Super S. The current Graffiti S is just a simplified version, one that repetitive renditions have rendered to the simplest, most transmittable form. The S seems to have proliferated itself through the educational system. It would be learned in school by children and spread outwards. When it started is impossible to know, but I believe the S probably originated somewhere in the British Empire as the Spanish S. It then spread through the empire in classrooms and into the wider Anglosphere, colonies and countries where it would later spread outward, probably around sometime in the 1800s. It would explain how absolutely widespread it is, starting in the form of the Spanish S, then moving to the modern form. In this case, it would be a truly pre-internet meme. Not one of the oldest ones, but probably one of the most popular. It is an actual meme too, an image that spreads through actual memetics. It is not funny, but it is an idea that spreads and reproduces itself, a thing picked up by other people and reused. Not for any purpose, but it is. Decades of social pressure have turned it into a dominant symbol. It continues to persist. These are just a scant few theories too, there are plenty more esoteric ones. Claims it is an occult rune, a magical ward, a government psyop, or something even more sinister. None of these are likely, but it comes up every few years in fringe circles. The S is magical in a way. Without any meaning, it continues to exist. Children and adults, alone or in tandem, either learn of it or invent it independently, despite never knowing what it is. Well, it is an S. I think. I will put it up to the audience. Did you draw this thing? What did you call it? What are your theories on it? Here, beauty really is in the eye of the viewer. The Super S really is the litmus test of childhood. A kid either learns to draw it, or fails to grasp its mystery. Not that there is any answer to that mystery. Though, sometimes, no answer really is just the best answer. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> Why did everyone draw this? Like, everyone. It's a universal S. This S transcends time and space. Kids everywhere, aliens or whatever, they will all draw the S like this.